For my latest project, I've designed a 3D printed case, made up of two parts which clip together around the internal components. What I was keen to avoid was having the clean line spoiled with the nuts of the fastenings showing on the front, so I wanted a way of hiding them in the print, but lacking the expertise required for heat set inserts. This is the method I came up with, which is to pop them in mid-print, so the nut is entirely enclosed in one half of the case, ready for the bolt from the other to tighten the two parts together, leaving just the head of the bolt showing. Now, I'm relatively new to 3D printing, but it's exactly this kind of challenge that I'm finding most exciting. And rather than leaping in with the build proper, I've made myself a prototype, modelled using Tinkercad, and sliced for printing with Cura, where, running through the layers, it's easy to show my basic idea. On top of the base with a hole for the end of the bolt, I've got a hexagonal void, very slightly bigger than the size of my nut, the top of which is marked by a step in the side. This is the point I know my print head has cleared the nut. So time to pause the print, pop it in, before resuming, with the printer trapping it under subsequent layers. All well and good in theory, let's try it in practice. The key to this is knowing when to pause. My base layers are 4mm thick. Then comes the bit for the nut, which adds a further 2. This is very slightly more than the height of the nut itself, so I know when the Z measurement goes above 6 on the display, I can hit the pause button, ready for insertion. With my Ender 3 Neo, this sends the print head off to the left and the bed to the back of the printer, which isn't ideal as we have to reach over everything to get the nut in, while making sure not to lean on any of the moving parts, making it that little bit more fiddly than it needs to be. But when we finally got it pressed in, and the top of the nut is below the edge, we're safe to resume the print, which will start building the layers above the nut, trapping it in place. In my prototype, I've left the overprinting to a minimum so I can see what's going on, but even though there's not much over the nut, there's enough to hold it down. I'll bury it more thoroughly when it comes to production. That bit of string and spare filament from the pores easily breaks off, leaving a nice clear print, which I can put to the test straight away, even not waiting for the print bed to cool. And I'm pretty happy with that as proof of concept. Now it's time to refine and adapt for the case itself, and I've made a second test block, incorporating the contours of the sides, and a matching block for the top, with a countersink for the bolt, so that's nice and flush with the surface. Once again, you can see the hexagonal hole, a little bit deeper than the height of the nut, shown by the step on either side. This is when we need to drop in the nut, before subsequent layers print across the hole. This is easier to show in the slicer. Going through the layers, we've got the round hole for the end of the bolt, the hexagon for the nut, and two more layers above its thickness, which is our window of opportunity for insertion, before the print head comes over again, trapping it in place with subsequent layers. Just note these aren't printed on the nut, but over it, which is why I've gone for straight sides rather than a round hole. And here are our captive nut assemblies in the case. You can just about make out the hexagonal void, under what's evolved into more of a slot than a straightforward hole. And after grouping everything together and exporting as an STL, we're ready to slice. But before I do, there's one thing I want to do in Cura first, which is to rotate my design. The reason is that sideways on, I get a better access for dropping in my nuts. I may even be able to do it on the fly, without pausing at all. Then once again changing my infill settings to 100%, I can hit the slice button. And when I remember to put in my SD card, save the G-code to that, which when safely ejected can be popped in the printer. Embedding the nuts is very much a small part of a bigger project, and it's from the video for that that these sections are taken. So if you want to see the full context with Raspberry Pi Pico and display screen, just click on the link above. Meanwhile, let's get back to the nuts. And unlike the prototype, this time I'm going to try this without pausing. So I need to keep an eagle eye out for when the Z-axis hits 6mm. This is layer 30, which is when the print head has cleared the top of the hole for the nut. On my smaller experimental prints, this is where I pressed pause, fitted the nut and then resumed. But with my larger and slower print, I've got just about enough time to do this without pausing. And when the print head is busy on the other side, I can deftly, or not so deftly, prop in the nut before it comes round again. It's actually not as dramatic as it appears here. And with two layers leeway, I've got plenty of time to line up the next one, pop it in and press it flat, so the print head doesn't hit it when it goes over. Then at layer 33, we start to cover it over. As I mentioned earlier, the filament isn't actually on the nut. It's being printed over the hole, and I've learned that a straight bridge is very much more effective, hence the square slot rather than a circular hole. And we don't need to cover the nut entirely, just enough to give it something to push against when the bolt is tightened up, and all the layers above will give it strength. Then with all the excitement of the nut insertion over, we can leave the printer to do its thing and go and make a cup of tea. 
Printing the other side of the case is much more straightforward. That just has regular holes for the bolts, countersunk so the heads are flush with the surface. But with the nuts successfully embedded in this half, it's time to go on to assembly. The nuts for the bolts that hold my components in place are all hidden inside the case, so no need to embed those, it's just the ones for the case closure, as we only want to see the nice neat countersunk bolt heads from the outside. And here you can see those nuts, which, unlike heat set inserts, have a bit of movement which makes them much more forgiving when it comes to lining up the bolts. A wonky insert can spoil an entire print, but my bolts have no such trouble, with their ends easily engaging in the thread on the nuts tightening with the allen key, pulling them against the overprinted layers, until the two halves of my case are securely clamped together. Neat and tidy bolt heads on this side. Nice clean case, with no ugly nuts on the other. And that's the fastenings for my project complete. If you want to try it for yours, you'll obviously have to come up with your own CAD, and getting the hex holes right does require a little patience, and nut insertion a bit of practice. But I think you'll agree, the overall effect is worth it.